She couldn't find what? All right, Rowan, the third, no, what are we on? Second. Second petition. What does this mean? Okay, say that in again. I don't think it's among us. I think it's come to us also. Yeah, but close enough. Next time you get word for word, what do you want? Okay, and whoever came in, why would you leave the door open? All right. I don't even know what we're doing today. Yeah, I know. All right. So, <clears throat> who filled in their second, or their uh, stuff that they were supposed to do from the previous week? Alright, with these words. No, the second article of the creed. You did the second petition of the word. I'm gonna right here. Alright. Jesus is 100 percent God and 100 percent man. He is a He is maker and creator of everything. He is all-powerful and made perfect sacrifice, so all sins are forgiven. All right. This is the way I... This is the way I believe Jesus, Son of Mary, and true God, died for the sins of the world so that we can live with them. Did you do it? explanations is very good, because I'm with you. It is very difficult to put into our own words what some of these things mean. So, that's part of the reason that we have to memorize it. But, memorizing does nothing if you don't know what it means. So, ask questions of your parents. You should be in conversations with them. But, well done. <coughs> it is a very difficult task. All right. So, we are going to watch the Sermon on the Mount. <coughs> Again, didn't skip much today. We'll see what happens tonight. It's kind of a goofy scene in my opinion, but it's still the Word of God. Somebody came in late. Who was it that came in late? Me, 
Grayson and who? Zella. from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. The disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. <coughs> you are the salt of the earth. <laughs> But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices 
and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raha, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But, anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way, or... He may hand you over to the judge, the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness causes her to become an adulteress. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but keep the oaths you have made to the Lord. Hmm? But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. Simply let your yes be yes and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, Turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks you. And do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, 
what reward will you get? <laughs> Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners oh, to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. <coughs> And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This then is how you should pray. In heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth or moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the... The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. 
If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by word can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, and yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. But that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry. Saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye. <laughs> How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye, you hypocrites. <laughs> First take the plank out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. <laughs> Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. <sighs> Ask, and it will be given to you. <coughs> Seek, and you will find. And the door will be open to you, for everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, 
How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown <coughs> into the fire. Thus, by their fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many of you will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform any miracles? But I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. When he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. All right, that should be the longest section we have to watch all in one sitting. how much I can talk without coughing. Really? All right. So what was this particular section called? What do we call this? Three chapters in Matthew. The Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount. Where do you think it took place? On the mouth. On the mouth. There you go. You guys are geniuses. But <clears throat> this was not the only time that Jesus offered lots of teachings at a single time. Girls, you need to turn to Luke chapter 6. Boys, you need to turn to Matthew chapter 5.
So we've already got number one of the answers on your sheet. You should fill it in. Girls, you should be looking for 1195, page 1195. All right, so this was Sermon on the Mount. Girls, somebody read to us verse 17 from Luke chapter 6. Just why don't you start reading. And he came down with them and stood on the level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judah and Jerusalem and the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. All right, so he came down with his disciples onto a level place. So this would be the Sermon on the Plain. So we have the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew, Sermon on the Plain in Luke. There are some who speculate that this is just the authors offering different contexts. However, we believe teaching confess that Scripture does not make errors. And that Matthew is not so dumb that he thinks a mountain is a plain, or a plain is a mountain. And Luke is not so dumb that he thinks that a mountain is a plain. So probably Jesus did several of these large teaching sessions. That's not where we are. But you're not following along. So follow along. All right. Now, who is the intended audience of these sermons or these sessions of teaching? I love. Um, all the people that followed him. <coughs> all the people that followed him. Okay, so what would you call those? All of these people that followed him. Big crowd. Sam. Disciples. So Matthew five one. Sam, will you read? Chapter 5, verse 1. All right. So he saw large crowds. He went up on the, on the mountain and called his disciples to him. So this is a teaching for the disciples, not just all the crowds. What about Luke, chapter 20? I love when you read Luke, chapter 6, verse 20. All right, so who did, how do you know when somebody is talking to you? What's one good clue? Henry. In general. There you go. Generally, the person you're talking to is looking at you, right? If I'm talking to Jack, I'm probably not standing here and saying, you know, you really should be following the law. If you don't stop doing what you're doing, you're in trouble. Would you think I'm talking to Jack, or would it, do you think I'm talking to you? Me. This is what I'm saying. So, in both cases, he's talking to the disciples. Now, is this just the 12 disciples? No, we talked about this last time. He had lots of people that followed him around from place to place. So, we don't know how many people were involved in this. But we know that it's directed towards his disciples who are going to be responsible for teaching this to other people. All right, so blessings, also known as the Beatitudes. <coughs> Can I get one of the boys to read the blessings that Jesus goes through? Just the blessed are the blank. Blessed are the blank. You don't need all the other stuff that fills in. Jack. Uh, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who meet. Wait, hungry. what? All right, I'm going to run down. What was the first one? Uh, blessed are the poor in spirit. Poor. 
in spirit, okay? Lord. What? More. Me. Hungry. Hungry. So am I blessed if I'm persecuted because I'm a jerk? <laughs> no. no. Uh, apparently you are, actually. Uh, blessed are those who revile you and persecute you and are all kinds of evil against you also. Um, that's not what that is. Um, okay. When others revile you. Um, false. And then, uh, you're going to be glad for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets. Alright, so these are the blessed people in the Sermon on the Mount. A young lady, who can tell me who is blessed in the Sermon on the Plain? You just read from the list. Starts at verse 20. 